And we were looking around the country and we saw so many needs that our country had and many of us recognize uh, the validity of the scriptures and how they apply to our lives and we realized that just because we were elected officials that we couldn't leave uh, our faith outside of uh, what we did uh, for a living and in our careers and we recognized that the scripture said if you wanted God to heal our land that it was an obligation on our part to humble ourselves and to pray and we realized that that started with us and so so we looked around and we realized that it was important for members of Congress to come together and pray. So I started looking around and there was a room, 219, that was just off from the House floor. And uh, I worked out a deal with the current majority leader at the time for us to be able to go in there at the beginning each week when we started our session. Our sessions start sometimes on Monday, sometime on Tuesday night, but they're always at 6.30 when we have our first votes. And we got that room uh, so that we could go in there and pray for the country. And it started out a lot of, for several months, it was just me going in there um, and praying, and then it was me and one or two other members. And today, um, at, at the beginning of each of our sessions, sometimes it's standing room only as people come into that room. Uh, as we cast our first votes, we then go in and literally get down on our knees and pray that God would restore our land. And the exciting thing was that as people across the country began just hearing about that by word of mouth, they started calling us and saying, we know that you guys are leaders of the nation and you were praying for the country at this particular time. And even though we're in a different time zone, we want you to know we're praying for you right now at the same time you're praying. So we started having people in Hawaii and California and on the East Coast and across the country calling and saying we're joining you in prayer. And we realized something that was important. You know, if you look at Ezra and Nehemiah, they rebuilt the wall around um, Israel. Uh, we realized how important that was. And so what we realized is not to build a physical wall around the country, but to build a spiritual prayer wall. So we created for the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation a prayer wall where people all across the country can come together and take only five minutes that they'll commit to pray for the nation each week. If they will do that, then we will literally have 24 hour a day, seven days a week prayer for America. We believe that's the foundational underpinning for us to restore this nation. On the wall of my congressional office here in Washington, I have one thing, and that's a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And then beside it, I have the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. And the reason was because they had a tremendous document that they forged, which was the foundation of freedom, not just for the United States, but the foundation of freedom for the entire world. But we recognize that those, those founders made an enormous cost. They paid a huge price tag. Many of them lost their fortunes. Many of them lost children. Many of them lost their homes. But at the end of that document, they were willing to not just vote for it, not just talk about it, but they literally took their pens and they signed their names, which they believed to be a death warrant at the time, and they pledged, as you know, their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. And one of the things that we realize how important it is for us today as Americans to also sit back and do what Christ told us to do, which was count the cost. And once we count the cost, we realize the price tag that we're willing to pay to help restore America. And make it the nation we know that God intended it to be.